I'm done with myself. Now I'm ready for someone else in my life. But as long as I'm still working on myself, there's no room for another person. So there's this great line from uh, this popular song, Piano Man. It's a bar scene. And one of the lines is, they're sharing a drink they call loneliness, but it's better than drinking alone. Loneliness, you share. Two lonely people get together, they're not lonely. But then they go home, and they're alone. Now, loneliness, we understand why it's painful, unpleasant. What is wrong with being alone? <laughs> why, why is everybody saying, just leave me alone? So really, in a sense, what you're saying is, or well, it seems that perhaps what you're saying is, there isn't necessarily anything wrong with being alone per se. It's just missing perhaps the thing that brings meaning and value and fulfillment to everything that the person is. The thing that brings me to something more than me. Right. So it's a divine instinct, not a human instinct. Human beings would rather be alone. Just leave me alone. If I need something, I'll call you. But don't call me. Right? That would be the human instinct. The divine instinct in us, which we're mimicking God, is no, just me does not compute. And we don't know why. There's no pragmatic uh, benefit. On the contrary, <laughs> pragmatically, it's a disaster. So now that we've established, let's say, and clarified that the value in marriage, in being together, in sharing intimacy with a partner, with a spouse, is that it brings one beyond the state of, you know, individual perfection. Let's say the person could be perfect, but that, you know, they're still not going to have what marriage will bring them. To what degree then does a person need to be perfect or as close as possible to being perfect before they're ready to get married or pursue marriage to be able to add that on top of themselves in, you know, their, their perfect state of being? Well, ideally, they should be perfect in the literal sense of the word. With, Good luck with that. Right. <laughs> you know, responding perfectly to every situation properly, exactly, correctly, proportionately. Okay, that's... In this case, perfection means I, I don't want to have more of me anymore. Enough about me. So, in that sense, I'm done with myself. Now I'm ready for someone else in my life. But as long as I'm still working on myself, there's no room for another person. And I say, if you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror and you're fascinated by what you see, you're not ready to get married. But if you look in the mirror and you say, what, you again? It's time to get married. So to sort of come at that very practically, right? I, I see for sure the the inspiration in that, that a person who, let's say, wants to get married feels like they should pursue a relationship or is in a relationship and they want to do it correctly. Obviously, it sounds like what you're saying is that a real foundational aspect of a proper fulfilling relationship is that it's not about oneself. It's about the spouse, the partner. That being said, practically speaking, does a person who, let's say, wakes up in the morning and looks in the mirror and is fascinated by what they see, or a person who's still feels like they've got a long way to go in terms of their personal development or whatever it is, that therefore they actually shouldn't pursue a relationship? They shouldn't look to get married? Yeah. It's not fair to the other partner. It's something like this. When we're dating... Uh, for this, for the purpose of marriage, not not what's going on today. This, this the social system of today is toxic and destructive. 
I think everybody will agree to that. Dating, living together, premarital sex, it's never about the other person. It's always about myself. What I'm feeling, what I want, what I like, what I enjoy. Marriage means it's about the other person, right? So here's how dating is supposed to work. I go out and I meet a girl. What am I looking for? What am I, what am I, what do I need to know? In modern setting, I go out with someone to find out whether she is the most beautiful, the most intelligent, the most entertaining, the most exciting, the most. That is so unnatural that it is actually harmful. When you're dating and you're thinking marriage, you're not looking for a trophy. You're not looking for the greatest experience for mind-blowing sex. You're looking for someone that will be a permanent part of your life. So what, what are you going to find out on, on the date that's going to help you make that decision? So, of course, you have to check out each other's looks. But you're not marrying the looks because you're not looking for beauty. But if the look is uncomfortable to you, then you should not marry. So dating means I want to check it out to see if her looks are comfortable for me, if her personality is comfortable, if her body language is comfortable, not if she's the greatest and the best, but that it's It suits me. And then it's not a contest. You're not going to have a society or, or a community in where there's one very good-looking girl, and that's all any, any of the guys want or, or are looking for, and they're competing for her attention. That is such an unhealthy society. One other thing. If you're really thinking about marriage, take this very seriously. Imagine a woman gets married, and they've been married for, whatever, 35 years. She's now 50 years old. Her husband comes home and says, we just hired a new secretary at the office. She's gorgeous. I say this to a group of women, and they all go, oh, my God. Then what? What's wrong with a gorgeous secretary? Why is that a threat to the wife? And if it is a threat to the wife, what kind of life is she living? This is cruel and unusual punishment that a 50-year-old has to be competing with a 20-year-old. It's cruel. It's an unlivable lifestyle. If the husband hires a beautiful secretary, the wife should say, oh, great, it's good for the business. And not feel threatened at all. That's called a marriage. That's called intimacy. That's called a family and a home. But if she has to compete with every 20-year-old, she doesn't have a life worth living. Every time he walks out the door, she has to be anxious. That's horrible. So the entire system of modern dating and marriage, it's nasty. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it.